my own view is that as a starting point, whatever the government proposes has to be proved to be legal before it can go any further. As we've heard from the many protests against these proposals, the detail of which we will not see until tomorrow, there are bound to be legal challenges. Um, I do not believe that this is an issue on which the United Kingdom government should break its link with the European Convention on Human Rights. That might happen as a result of the proposals if they appear tomorrow in a form that has been flagged up to us. Also, there are better ways of dealing with many of these problems. I would like to see, for example, evidence that both the National Crime Agency and the police were applying the resources which this very important organised crime, important to the nation, um, it, it is causing. Um, surely it should be right at the top of the priorities of the police and the National Crime Agency, apart from possibly terrorism. And we need to see a, a change of approach, because simply saying we will deprive people of their internationally guaranteed right to apply for political asylum in a country in which they arrive is not going to be an adequate response, and it will struggle to find its way through Parliament if the government really proposes to take it through Parliament. I would have thought that given the success that the Prime Minister had with uh, discussions with the President of France on the Northern Ireland Protocol, talking about these issues to the French, finding joint ways of dealing with the problem, possibly the establishment of holding centres on the French side of the Channel might be a more fruitful way of dealing with these matters. Let's just break down some of those, those three points that you've made. I mean, obviously, we are going to find out more tomorrow, aren't we, about what the logistics are, and there are those talks at the end of the week in terms of the possibility of there being more on the French side. But, but why, why shouldn't the UK break its links with, with human right, international human rights legislation, do you think? Because the European Convention on Human Rights is subscribed to by all the many countries which are members of the Council of Europe, which is far more countries than the European Union. And it has been of great advantage in holding some governments which have occasionally strayed from the rule of law to account. Given our great democratic and legal traditions, I would have thought that the United Kingdom would not want to be seen as an outlier in the human rights world, joining the likes of... Iran, for example, um, a country which is often cited as the worst exemplar of bad human rights. We do not want the reputation of our country to dim be diminished uh, under human rights principles unless it's absolutely necessary. And I think that the government um, will struggle to prove that leaving the European Convention would be necessary. And in terms of the police and, and the National Crime Agency, you are you suggesting that they are not doing enough? Well, they haven't been very successful. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. Um, the National Crime Agency and the police have considerable resources which they do devote to the detection of organised crime. And normally, to be fair to them, they're quite successful. Um, for example, the um, interdiction of terrorist plots. I used to be the independent reviewer of terrorism legislation, so I could speak about this is successful and has saved the lives of many people. I would like to see a similar standard of effort put into the organised crime of bringing people across the channel in small boats, because I doubt if it's being fulfilled uh, at the moment as well as it could be.